Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I haven't posted a video in a while, but I have a few in the works. Until those projects are finished up, I was going to go over our house renovations over the past year and a half. Jillian and I purchased a farmhouse that was originally built in 1838. It sat vacant for a few years, and prior to that was a garden market. There was a lot of fallen down greenhouses, brush, garbage, and various other things to clean up, while the leather was still nice to work outside. One of the perks to buy in the house was it came with a case backhoe. It was handy for landscaping, such as pulling stumps, moving rocks, and leveling dirt. Jillian even ran it around the yard to pull some trees. Once the weather turned, we made our way inside for the renos. At the time, we both had the idea to film it for a YouTube series. We didn't make it very far due to time constraints, but here are a few clips that we took at the start. So you can see here, uh, what we're, we're uh, doing is taking all this uh, lath and plaster off. It, uh, it crumbles away pretty quick. Um, the fact that it does crumble makes it hard to clean up. As you can see, the floor is just littered with it. Um, so we will have to come up with a, uh, a chute into a dumpster. Maybe we can uh, come out of one of the windows with a wooden chute and um, slide everything out of it that way once our dumpster arrives but uh, you can see the old uh, lath all the wood they uh, basically nail it solid solid um, solid wood right to the um, right to the rafters but uh, definitely not a common uh, a common building pattern today so here's where we're at today um, the plan for the house is to go right from the top right from the roof right to the basement um, so for, in order to do that, everything has to come out. Um, you can see the top of the stone wall there, but you come over here and you see why there's no insulation between the old stone wall and the lath and plaster. So by ripping everything down, it'll give us basically a brand new house inside an old stone house. Parker has the demo done. This wall is about to timber at any moment. And now Parker's mom and Darlene are uh, reacting to the wall out of the house we're actually planning on keeping. Uh, we really like the natural charm of it. Um, however, the one thing that's still got to go is the carpet. <laughs> After we got started, we were eager to keep going, so we missed a few photos along the way. This is now the remainder of the first floor. 180 years ago, logs were milled flat and then used as floor joists. After supporting the floor for that time, they had a big bow in the middle and started to dry rot. I used a chain hoist from the second floor to move these beams to the center of the house and pulled them out through the front door with my truck. In the basement, there was a cistern, a stone holding tank that collected rainwater for household use before drilled wells. This was taken up almost a quarter of the basement, so it had to go. With sledgehammers and jackhammers, we took to it. Some of the stone were over 100 pounds each, so I rented an excavator and put it through the front door into the basement. This helped lift the stone out. Here is the pile after we were finished. The stone worked perfect to spread and make a temporary driveway to the front of the house for trucks to get close and not stuck in the mud. Two months after starting the renovation project, we finally got to adding new material to the house. I started with framing a footing around the perimeter of the basement and added material to the walls to handle any seeping water. 
The middle of February is not the perfect time to cure cement, but with some construction heaters and the masonry experience from a grandfather, we got it poured. Two days after the footing was poured, we started framing as we waited for material for the basement slab. Engineer floor joists were used for the first floor. Once I could get the basement dry, we laid three inches of rigid insulation and then in-floor radiant heating tubes zip tied to wire mesh. With the help of family and friends, we were able to pour this floor in the morning and my grandfather and I spent the afternoon finishing it as it cured. It didn't take long after that to finish the subfloor and framing. It was exciting to see the stairwell go in and the stairs be installed. It was a few months of climbing ladders to move between floors. The window wells took a while to frame, but we loved how they turned out. When spring came around, I went to work on the outside to strip the siding off the side room and to start with landscaping. The grade sloped towards the house in a few spots, which led the water right to the house and into the basement. A local contractor made quick work in an afternoon. We wanted to darken the color of the steel roof, so in mid-May we rented a lift, as the roof was too steep to walk up. We started by washing the roof and then primer and paint. We used an airless sprayer that stayed on the ground with a 100-foot hose. Jillian was on the ground to keep the pail topped up with paint. Since there were no windows and the soffit was being replaced, there were very few areas to mask off, and I sprayed the roof over the course of three days. Since all the equipment was already out, we decided to paint the roof on the family barn over the weekend. While working outside, we had the electrical and HVAC completed inside, including all new ductwork and a 200 amp service. To heat the house, we used a ground source heat pump. This geothermal unit pumps water through pipes under the front field to heat the house in the winter and cool it in the summer. We decided on doing spray foam from the basement right to the roof and are glad we did. It takes very little energy to heat the house. My grandfather was a huge help and completed the outside masonry during the hottest week of the summer. This is thin concrete veneer manufactured to look like field stone that matched the house. I finished siding the side room with a vinyl board and batten and like typical country fashion on a makeshift scaffold. Eight months after taking on the project together and dating for almost four years, I decided it was time to ask Jillian to marry me. The project had its ups and downs, but without each other's support, we wouldn't have been able to complete it. We got married just over a year later at the family farm. After I installed the windows and doors, we had a local company finish the drywall, and then Jillian and I used the same paint sprayer that we used for the roof to prime and paint the inside. We laid a laminate on the first floor and had the custom kitchen installed. The double wide fridge and freezer is amazing and saves having a deep freezer in the basement. My favorite part of the house is the oak staircase with glass panels for an open concept. Since the stairs were initially moved, the 180-year-old floor joists from the second floor were used as a tabletop for the dining room table. I welded up some steel legs to hold the table. The last step outside was to install drains for the eaves trough and finish the landscaping. I rented an excavator for the weekend to lay gravel on the driveway and to build a road to the shop. In total, we had over 10 triaxles of 3 inch and 5 8 minus gravel. Buckwheat took the excavator for a drive, and we made a rock garden at the end of the driveway. While Jillian was gone for the weekend, I surprised her with a patio. The base was packed, and I rented a stone saw to cut the patio stones into a neat shape. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. It was definitely a big task, and I would like to thank the love and support from friends, family, and of course my wife, Jillian. As a bonus, I included the progress of the shop as we painted it, installed an overhead door and a car hoist. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for some more videos.